And just to preface um, before we start, I'm not going to be cueing the way I would be for a Meridian Yoga um, Therapy official sequence because I need to make room to show you and tell you um, and lead you through modifications and variations. So we'll, we'll get into a lot of it, but I'm assuming that everybody's sort of getting the gist of all the meridians. In the meantime, let's find ourselves on our chairs. We'll start on our chairs seated. I'm gonna use my blocks under my feet because I'm pretty short. Um, and this just helps me have a better, um, you know, a better experience with my feet on the blocks. You can do the same if that works for you. And we will recalibrate our collective consciousness with the sound of one ohm. Inhaling through the nostrils to prepare. Uh, may all beings be guided and protected by our studies and our practice today, including ourselves being free of suffering and pain, all of our actions helping to free everyone everywhere helping each other along the way always. And lower the prayer, open your eyes. We'll start by slapping the vertical pathway. So keep in mind if you have, or you're working with someone who has osteoporosis, you're gonna to want to hinge from the waist down, glide your hands down. We'll start with tapping, slapping the tops of the feet if you can reach that far down. And if you can't, don't worry. If your student can't, don't worry. It's just to have fun and waken, aw awaken the senses of the stomach meridian here as we move up, flapping the top of the body, the front of the body, moving up into the quad muscles. And you can use your fist and hit into your hip creases if you want to here. I'm being gentle since my operated leg is very tender, but engage your abdominal muscles and then hit harder through the abdominal area. We are allowing ourselves to build up uh, a power, a strength in the abdominal wall. We're also firing up the digestive flame. Use your palms as you move up through the ribs and then get behind the collarbones for stomach 12. We'll come back to that point with self pressure. Moving up into the front of the throat, sides of the lips, moving into the front of the face, right beneath the lower lid, stomach one point. And of course, we're releasing any overthinking, over worrying, reverse the direction, come through these sinusy points in the face. And just use your breath to find this journey deep inside yourself, front of the throat back of the collarbone, stomach 12. Use the palms on the top ribs, moving all the way down to the bottom ribs. Feel the lungs expand, the ribs expand as you inhale. And then again, contract the stomach muscles and hit hard in the abdominal area. And you can continue with the fists down the quads. Use the palms on the fronts of the knees, fronts of the lower legs and hinge from the hips. Go as far down as you can, lapping the tops of the feet. See if you can reach the second toes and then pinch, hold, or squeeze the second toes. We're just having fun here. We're allowing the body to just find its way with the pathways and the points. Lap the sides of the body, gallbladder pathway, dissipating any stress real or imagined through the sides of the body. And you can use your fists into the TFL muscles, the stabilizing muscles of the hips here. Again, I'm being very cautious on my operated side, so bear with me. Use your palms on the sides of the torso, and maybe you even think about the gallbladder on the right side of the body, living directly below the liver. Let's use the tops of our knuckles and rub the ribs from the armpits all the way to the lower ribs. Sit tall in your chair. Really feel the breath moving the prana in with every inhalation. Every exhalation, you're releasing anything in the universe of you that doesn't serve you. Let's use our opposite fist on our opposite um, upper trapezius, gallbladder 21 point. Release any tension here, stagnant chi. Get the other shoulder. We'll come back to these points also. And then use the fingertips up the sides of the throat behind the jawbone. This uh, jaw relation to the side of the body is so important. Mm -hmm. 
get a lot of tension in our jaws. Bring your fingertips behind the ears, up above the ears. Come back to gallbladder eight point. Tapping into the temporalis muscle here. Close your eyes. Go into the hidden areas of the body and mind, the brain that you don't normally attend to. Find yourself in the corner, outer corners of the eyes, gallbladder one point. And let's reverse the direction. This pathway allows us to release anger. Like Rosanna was talking about anger that is either in or out. Let it go so you can release pain. Down the side of the throat, get the tops of the shoulders. Using the fists, use the top of the knuckles, rub the sides of the ribs like a washboard, and then slap the sides of the torso, making sure that you're sitting straight up. Keep your spinal column long and tall. Me moving down the sides of the TFL muscles, the stabilizing muscles of the hips. You can use your fists or your palms moving down the IT bands. And again, hinging forward from the hips, moving down as far as you can down the sides of the legs. See if you can reach the fourth toe. Pinch, hold, or squeeze the fourth toe. We'll continue on the back of the body, using our fists into the heels in the back if you can reach, or just at the Achilles tendon. Or if you really can't even go that far, you can just kind of press into the bladder 40 point behind the knee at the top of the calf. Maneuver up with your fist to the hamstrings. And as you lead with the heart sitting up, get into the gluteal muscles. We're releasing any stress maybe in the piriformis here, maybe in the psoas even. And you can get into that triangular area of the sacrum, hitting hard there, separating the fists out to the muscles on the sides of the spinal cord, moving all the way up to behind the navel where you can correlate the tapping that you're doing with the fists to the kidneys, maybe even to the adrenals above the kidneys. And when you can go no higher, Bring the hands up, slap the top of the back, moving up to the next spine, getting into that bladder 10 point at the top of the next spine, the bottom of the occipital lobe. We'll come back to that celestial pillar point. Moving up with the fingernails all the way to the top of the head, pull the energy up through the crown chakra, that GV20 point that where everything is connected. And then close the eyes and move the fingertips all the way to the front of the forehead. See what lights up there. What are you feeling? Again, create that journey into the depths of yourself, deep into your organs, your emotions, your prana. Get all the way to the tear duct corners of your eyes. You might pinch, hold, or squeeze here. We're letting go of fear. Muladhara Bandha, root chakra. Reverse the direction. Come back between the brows, front of the forehead. Maybe use the nails on the top of the skull, back of the head. Tapping into bladder 10 points, celestial pillar points, neck, spine, flapping the top of the scapula and shoulder blades on the back. And then bring the fists up again, moving down from the adrenals, the kidneys, all the way down both sides of the vertebra, never on the vertebra themselves and all over the glutes, gluteus medius, gluteus medial maximus, get into the sacral area that triangular bony parts really great to vibrate these pelvic organs great for uterine issues for women prostate issues for men and then hinge from the hips keeping the back flat lead with the heart and bring the fist down the hamstrings maybe down the back of the calf muscles all the way to the achilles tendon and if you can reach find your pinky toe pinch hold or squeeze the pinky toe and then slowly and gently hinge back up, lead with the heart. We're going to continue now with stretching the pathways that we've just activated and we'll stand up, we'll come to standing. And you can keep your feet hips with distance apart, whatever gives you balance. You want to feel comfortable, you want to be able to do this stretch, you can hold on to the chair, you can bring your hand to your uh, waist, your right hand to your waist, just root down through your left foot and bring the left fingers up so that you're stretching up before you stretch over. You might even cross your right foot in front of your left. Whatever allows you to go as deeply as possible without hurting yourself, without you know compromising any sense of balance, but you wanna feel this opening along the 
gallbladder side of the body on the left. Soften your head on the neck. And maybe in your mind's eye, visualize the pathway, your breath moving the energy from the outer corner of the left eye, zigzagging around the left ear, back to the forehead, then back down behind the ear, down the neck, top of the shoulder, side of the left torso, the body moving the energy down with the breath all the way down through the IT band, out through the fourth toe. And then inhale, gently rise up, keeping your abdomen in. We'll take that on the other side. I'm just going to move over to the other side of my chair. So you can have your feet connected. If you feel like you have the balance, you can have Kali Mudra here. You can have your hands, hip, no, hip shoulder width dif distance. You can even use a strap here to allow you to feel confident that you are keeping your shoulders at your hands at shoulder width distance. You can just keep your palms facing each other. Whatever works for your body, press down through the right foot and then bring the right fingertips up and over. Feel the stretch in the side body before you even begin to bend over to the left side of your room. Feel your right hip points stretching out towards the right side of your room. Breathe into what is going on inside of you. What are you feeling? And then inhale, rise back up. We're gonna stretch the front of the body now, the stomach pathway, moving from the gallbladder pathway. Come to your wall. So we're going to use our chair here, turn the seat of your chair towards the wall. And again, you can have your feet hips with distance. They can be, um, heel, toes, knees together, whatever allows you to feel the most comfort, confidence, and balance. And then we'll, again, stretch through either hands, shoulder width distance apart, or hands joined interlacing your fingers. Pull up through your eyes, elevate your gaze up and back, the chin up and back, and then bring the hands to the wall. So you want to be as far from the wall, a close distance, not too far, not too close, where you can come back with your hands and find that balance. Maybe even the top of your head finds the wall so you feel held and stable and secure. Maybe then you go deeper, allowing the hip points to press forward. Feel what is happening internally. What do you sense? And then lead with the heart, let's rise up. That stomach pathway was allowing us to release and find clarity of thought, releasing overthinking. Let's come forward, hinging from the hips. Bring your hands to the chair first, and then begin to slide your forearms down. Maybe you grab opposite elbows and keep a deep bend in the knees. So this Uttanasana, opening up the back of the body, or being held by the chair. Maybe you go a little bit deeper, where your head comes in between your forearms, in between your arms, your biceps, and in front of the chair. Just see if you can feel the opening through the back of the body. And we'll come out of it as we came into it. Hinge up, lead with the heart, bring the hands to the seat of the chair, keep your back long and strong, and then bend the knees and roll yourself back up. So just a few little modifications for those side and front and back body stretches. We'll bring our chair back to the front of the mat and sit back down for our fascial stretches. Again, I'm putting my feet on my blocks. You do you, you're your own best teacher. So see what works for you, meet yourself where you are, but root down through the pelvic floor, through the sits bones, and then stretch up through the top of the head before you stretch your fingertips out to the sides of the room. Palms facing up, we're moving into our lung pathway stretch. The lung meridian has to do with finding freedom, liberation, it's like the lungs uh, release the toxins from the body as you exhale. This is what this subtle stretch with uh, your thumbs pulling back towards the back of the room can do for your emotions and your energy within. Let go. 
this pathway governs sadness and sorrow and grief and depression. See if you can feel liberated from it all, inhaling the beautiful positive prana, exhaling anything that you don't need within the world of you, stretching the thumbs back, and then gently drop the left arm down, begin to rotate the right palm towards the mat, pull through the right index finger, swivel your chin towards the left shoulder, you might hold on to the left side of your chair, and then bring the chin down towards your armpit. And this is a beautiful continuation of the lung pathway stretch. This is large intestine. They both work together. They're about cleansing, eliminating the large intestine as an organ is eliminating things you've digested. So here you are letting go and finding this sense of cleansing of your emotions. Feel the subtle energy move from the tip of the index finger across the top of the arm, the bicep, the deltoid, side of the neck into the front of the face, out through the left nostril. And then let's come through center, bring that right arm down. Let's stretch through the left index finger. Swivel the chin towards your right shoulder down to your right armpit. This is the only pathway that crosses the midline of the body. This is Shumna channel. Feel it crossing the spine, eliminating with the breath out through the right nostril. Large intestine and lung pathway are metal elements. And that might help you find boundaries and a sense of structure. Gently release that left arm down. We'll continue with pericardium stretch. So all your fingers stretch straight up as you press your palms out to the sides. Allow your navel to stretch in and up towards your heart. Maybe even pulling the pelvic floor down, pulling the heart high. This is the, the connective tissue that surrounds the heart and allows you to create a sense of joy and connectivity, not just with everyone around you, but with yourself also. What do you feel here? What are you sensing? Can you breathe into a deeper sense of connection with yourself? And then gently release the arms down, keep the palms forward, pull the ring fingers back, keep the heart high, and then bring the chin down. This is your triple heater pathway. We're gonna glide the chin to the left armpit, pull through the right ring finger towards the back of the seat of your chair. And see if you can breathe into this sense of releasing defense energy, boosting your immune system. Glide the chin across the chest towards the right armpit, pull through the left ring finger. You're connecting to all the organs within here, allowing the connective tissues to take you deeper. And in your mind's eye, you might move the energy from the tip of the ring finger up the back of the arm behind the ear to the outer corner of the left eyebrow. It would be bilateral symmetry on both sides. And you can bring the chin forward and give yourself a rotation of the neck in one direction and maybe in the other direction as you continue to pull the ring fingers. We're gonna continue with our heart and small intestines, but you might wanna grab your strap here and bring the strap across your lap and then stretch the fingertips straight out to the sides of the room, palms facing forward. Now, normally we go into the bind, bringing our left thumb down and we continue that internal rotation. Let's start by cactusing our arms first and then leaning, tilting our fingertips towards the back, keeping the elbows in one line, keeping the heart high and parallel to the front and see if you can feel the energy move from deep inside the heart, down the undercarriage of the arms into the tips of the pinkies. Now let's reverse our arms, our cactus, bringing the hands, the fingers down, bringing the fingers towards the back, but trying to keep the shoulders down from the ears. We're moving through heart to small intestine pathway, front of the heart, back of the heart. Maybe you feel the energy zigzagging up the scapula in the back, moving into the back of the heart, connecting you to the wisdom of the self. And if you wanna do this, you can also bring the hands behind you, depending on, again, if you have, or your student has 
rotator cuff issues, frozen shoulder. You can bring the hands behind. You can bring them into a prayer behind the back. Um, people with frozen shoulder or rotator cuff issues are probably not going to be able to do that. But they could just bring the back of their hands sort of behind their hip area there and then bring the elbows forward and back, just gently activating heart and small intestine. And the, let me show you with the strap. So you have the bind. We're going to bring the left thumb down, continue that internal rotation with the left shoulder, bring the back of the left hand behind the heart. Use the strap in your right hand, pick your arm up, elbow facing forward, dropping the strap towards your left hand. And then just pull gently. If you can reach your fingers, that's great for the bind. More important is to find that external rotation of the right shoulder and then breathe and maybe close your eyes connecting your beautiful luminosity of self to all sentient hearts and beings everywhere the fire element love compassion kindness and gently release we'll take that on the other side stretch the fingertips straight out palms facing forward rotate the Right thumb down, continue that internal rotation of the right shoulder. The side may be completely different. Take the back of the right hand behind the heart. Take your strap into your left hand, elbow facing forward. Gently drop it back until you can grab it in your lower hand. And again, more important to try to get your elbow behind your head. Externally rotating, open that left shoulder. Closing your eyes. Breathing into everything that is happening everywhere within you. Connecting to the wisdom of the self. And then slowly and gently release. Place your strap somewhere where you can access it later. And we're going to come to standing. We're going, I'm going to show you two different ways to modify sun salutation. So the first way, let's turn our chairs towards so the seat is facing your wall in the behind you. Um, so you can have the wall holding you as you reach up. And again, you can have your feet hips width distance. They can be together, whatever allows you to feel most comfortable, most grounded, most balanced. We inhale our prayer up. Perhaps the prayer lands on the wall holding you securely balancing and giving you confidence and then hinge from the hip, leading the prayer down through the heart, palms on the seat of your chair. See how deeply you can go. If you can slide your forearms down, grabbing opposite elbow with opposite hands, bending the knees, bringing your head in front of the seat of the chair. Whatever works for you, that is what is good for you. Find yourself in the here and now. And then rise up, reversing the direction. Bend the knees, stretch up. You can do this two more times. I'm going to take a break here and show you how to do this against the wall. We're all going to meet at the wall. You can turn your chair back, but because we will need it back that other way. But if you want to do a modified sun salutation against the wall, bring your palms to the wall and bring your feet out as far as feels comfortable. You don't want to feel like you're going to fall over. You want to make sure that you feel secure. And then if it's in your practice, and if you don't have osteoporosis, you can do this wave, kind of waking up your spinal column. So bending your knees, bending down, leaning up. So you're creating this little wave, this little sun salutation, not only giving thanks to the sun out in the sky, but to the, the illumination within you, in your heart. Do you feel that? And then let's find a stillness. Let's create this modified downward dog, keeping your palms pressing into the wall, keeping your gaze in front of you. You can close your eyes even. You can keep a deep bend in the knees if you need to. But just allow yourself to feel comfortable and held and supported. See if you can connect with the conscious parts of the body, the eyes, the toes the fingers and then take it deeper, breathing into the unconscious parts, the organs, 
the prana, the emotions. Let's go deeper with a three-legged dog. Stretch your right toes back and you can keep the toes on the mat. If you feel confident and comfortable and safe and balanced, lift your toes up. Feel the lengthening and strengthening from the right fingertips to the right toes. The right lung expanding to hold space for and supporting the right shoulder. The ascending colon, the liver, the gallbladder, the right kidney, the right side of the intestines. Holding space for supporting the right hip. And then gently release the toes back down to the mat if you had your foot raised and gently glide your right foot to meet your left. Let's take that on the other side now, stretching the left toes back. Either remain here or lift the toes, feeling that lengthening and strengthening through the left side of the body, the left lung, the left side of the heart, holding space for the left shoulder, the descending colon, the stomach, spleen, and pancreas, the left kidney, the left side of the intestines holding space for the left hip, making sure your hip points are parallel towards the wall and the floor. And then slowly release the left foot down, gliding the left foot to meet the right. You can take another one of those modified sun salutations, sort of a modified cat cow. And then walk your feet forward until you're ready to return to the chair. Bring yourself back into the chair. Maybe your feet back on your blocks. And let's go into our bladder pathway. So hinging from the hip, we're going to glide our hands down our legs until we come to our bladder 60, 62 points on the outside of the heel on the uh, just below the ankle bone. And if you can't reach that with your thumbs, pinching the backs of your heels, just begin to massage that with your middle finger. And if you can't reach that far, you can just massage the whole Achilles tendon. You can move back up to that bladder 40 point behind the knee, above the calf. This is just to open the entire back of the body to release fear to help you find a balance of the central nervous system of the fight, fight, the fight, flight, or freeze response pattern of the body. And let's go deeper still. Bring your elbows to your knees, reach your middle fingers or your thumbs to your bladder 10 points at the occipital lobe in the top of the neck, celestial pillar points, and massage, opening that whole back of the body, that bladder pathway, feeling that sense of trust and faith over fear, release the fear and shock, and then slowly release the hands down, hinge up from the hips until you are seated with the heart high, pressing down through the sits bones into the seat of your chair. We'll continue with our yoga ball as we move into kidney pathway. So. I'm going to move my blocks out of the way. We can do this standing or seated, and I kind of like to do it standing. So let's try that because kidney is about creating willpower and balance, allowing the yin foundational energy of the earth to uh, rise up through the body. So we're going to put our yoga ball in kidney one at the sole of our foot, and you can stand up and use the back of the chair as your ballast or balance. We're going to bring the ball down and let's start with our left foot just rolling the left foot all over the ball finding that sweet spot of kidney one it's known as gushing spring and then take a moment and release your left heel down now we're going to bend our knee forward and back pulsing into kidney one maybe allowing this foundational yin energy to gush up through the body as women aging women we lose a lot of our yin. It's kind of like a, home, a hormone that we lose. So you can build it back up working with the kidney pathway, especially kidney one. Now gently, let's move our right foot over to the ball, making sure that you don't trip over it or uh, lose your balance. And you can just roll all over, let that feel wonderful, let it feel just delicious. And then release the right heel down, 
bending that knee forward and back, pulsing into kidney one. And now let's take our yoga ball and place it aside so that we don't trip on it. We're gonna find our strap again and sit down in the chair. So we're going to stretch through the kidney pathway. I'll show it both ways. You can just find yourself tall, sitting in your seat, tall and beautiful and balanced, and then bring your foot up, reach down for kidney one on your left foot. Let's do the left foot first. Stretch that leg out if you can. You can always leave your knee bent. More important to feel the movement from kidney one all the way through the inner leg. And you can hold on to the outside of your, on the right side of your chair and bring the leg out to the left. Continue to pull up through the heart. Feel the energy move from kidney one through the inner leg, up through the pelvic floor, up to just underneath the collarbones, kidney 27. Bring your foot back front and center. Pull. Stretch, elevate your foot a little higher to stretch through your hamstrings and then gently release your foot down. Now I'm going to have to show you how to do it with the strap on the other side of the body. Bring the strap to your kidney one point. And this is my operated leg, so I have a hard time reaching down to it. So this is really great to have this as an option, as a modification. Stretch that leg straight out. Allow that hamstring to feel the stretch. And then maybe you hold the strap in your right hand, hold on to the left side of your chair, gently bring that leg out for flag pose, paragustasana. Again, feeling the energy move from kidney one through the inside of the leg up to kidney 27 under the collarbones. Bring the leg back to front and center. Elevate your feet, your toes rather a little higher to stretch your hamstring. Maybe you feel that in your quad and then slowly and gently release. We'll do a modification of our spread foot posture in the chair. So bring your toes about 45 degrees out, bring your knees wide, and then we're going to hinge from the hips. Allow yourself to feel the sits bones widening. Glide your hands down until you can find kidney nine, <clears throat> excuse me, at the teardrop of the calf muscle. Kidney nine is a great point for releasing any extreme emotions or energy. And just keep your heart as high as possible. See if you can balance yourself here as you continue to press into kidney nine. And then slowly and gently rise up, bring your knees together. We'll move into stomach pathway, kapyasana. So we're gonna swivel our knees to the right side of our chair, bring your left hand to the back. Maybe you bring your left uh, hip and thigh off the chair. You're going to reach that leg back. And depending on if you have the wherewithal to stretch that knee straight, follow what works for you. You do you. Keep your, your hip points facing forward, though, and begin to press down with both sit bones before you lift, stretch up through your left fingertips. Then begin to lift your chin as you elevate your gaze up and back. Feel the whole front of the body stretching open. This is an earth element. You are nurturing yourself. You're nourishing yourself. You are enough. Tell yourself you are enough. And then lead with the heart coming out of your modified kapyasana. Knees together. Let's swivel the knees through center over to the left side of the chair. Bring the left hand to the back of the chair. Maybe bring that right hip, right thigh off the front of the chair. This is my operated leg, so I'm gonna be a little less mobile with it, but stretch it back. If you can keep your toes and the ball of your foot on the ground behind you and straighten your knee, that's beautiful. But more important is to keep your hip points facing forward, press down through the sit bones and then lift the right fingertips up, lift the chin, lift the gaze up and back. So important to be able to Know that you can look up and back and not lose your balance. You're sitting, you're sitting in a chair after all. It's all good. Pull up through the pelvic floor. Maybe you even feel the energy move from right underneath the um, lower lid on the right side of the body, down the front of the body, down to the second toe, stomach pathway. And then lead with the heart. Bring your right foot forward. Come out of your modified kapiyasana. Bring your knees together in front of you. 
and we'll set up for our abdominal massage. So if you want to have your blocks underneath your feet, do so. We're going to find our belly, go an inch outside, that's stomach 25, and a little further out, spleen 15. So these are really great points. You can hit them with soft fists and begin to massage in one direction. We're going to exhale all of our air out as we hinge forward over our fists, continuing to massage them and breathe down to your pelvic floor as you continue to maybe even release your head. You're smoothing out all the, these maybe tense and worrisome knotted up areas of the digestive tract, massage in the opposite direction. We're allowing ourselves to find clarity of thought, massaging through the stomach, abdominal massage here. It's so important to do every day. And then slowly and gently hinge back up. We'll go into stomach 12, massaging with our fingertips. Bring your shoulders forward, curve your fingers in, up and back into the cave behind the collarbone. And then release the shoulders, continuing to press into stomach 12. This point connects head to heart. And we like to move the chin gently down and up. Maybe you're actually finding balance between logical thought and emotional thought here. And you're also stretching through the esophageal area behind the throat. The whole digestive tube is being activated here. Gently release. We're gonna focus on stomach 12 and stomach 25 in our next modified pose, camel. And we're gonna do that at the wall. So bring your feet as close as you need to the wall. Bring your hands, heels of your hands to your lower back. Open up so that your elbows can, I mean, it depends how close you are to the wall. You might need to get closer. Your elbows should rest on the wall. And this is already gonna help you open up across stomach 12, across the area behind the collarbones and go deeper. Think about stomach 25 as you lift your gaze, bring the top of your head to the wall, press your hip points forward. What do you feel here? Heart opening, yes, but perhaps pericardium, perhaps other pathways, perhaps other subtle energy. And then lead with the heart, rise up from your modified camel. Come back to sit in the chair we'll move into gallbladder pathway. So you can leave your feet on the mat, hit knees, hips width distance apart, or if you're feeling more stable and more flexible, you can bend your left knee, bring the inside of your left sole into the inner part of your right thigh. As we set up for gate pose, root down through the sits bones, bring the left hand to the back of the chair, your right hand to the knee, and find this sort of modified seated spinal twist. Go as deeply as you can. It feels delicious for your body, looking over your left shoulder, and then release a little bit. Root down through that sits bone on the left side, pull the left fingertips up, and you might want to bring your right hand to the outside of your right side of the chair and use that as balance so that you really feel that stretch through the top part of the gallbladder pathway. Let go of anger so you don't feel pain, let go of resentment, frustration, impatience, and then rise back up. You can release that foot down and uh, you can bring, bend your right knee, bring that foot up if that works for your leg. So it's something I just don't have the mobility yet for. So I'm gonna modify with my feet on the mat, on the blocks, bring my right hand back, bring your right hand back, and bring your left hand to the right knee. Sit up tall, Strengthening, lengthening the spine, gazes over the right shoulder, and then release the twist a little bit. Lift the palm of the right hand up. Find the stretch first before you arc over to the left. Feel that release of tension and stress through the side of the body. Maybe you use your mind's eye and visualize the pathway, and then inhale gently. Rise up. We're going to continue with self acupressure on gallbladder 21, shoulder well. You can do each side separately. I like to do it as a hug. Some people find this too uh, 
punchy for them, but I like to use both hands at the same time, massaging the trapezius muscles, then pressing down, letting stagnant chi move back down through the body into the earth, letting go of anything that creates a blockage, a point for dis-ease to occur. And then release, we'll find gallbladder eight about an inch above the top of our ears. It's sort of an indentation. It's great for headaches and earaches and throat pains. And you might close your eyes here as you tap into the temporalis muscle here, and move into these hidden parts of the mind and the body. And then gently release. We're gonna move into a modified pigeon, but we're gonna do it on the floor. And this is something that Rosaren and I have talked about, that as we age, you need to know how to get up if you fall. And falls are such a big part of what happens to people as they age. And I think it's also important to know how to get down on the floor in case you feel like you're going to fall, you can kind of preempt it. So I call this the therapeutic yoga dismount. And then we'll come back later with a therapeutic yoga mount. So I'm going to put my operated side of the body close to the chair. And I'm gonna bring, that's my right side. I'm gonna bring my right hand to the seat, hinging forward from the hips. And then I'm gonna bend my right knee, bringing my left hand down in front of my left foot, then bring my left knee down, and then bring my right hand down. So now I'm in a tabletop position. Let me see if you guys can see me. Okay, I'm gonna switch my camera angle here a little bit. So from the tabletop position, um, we're going to roll down onto the floor. I'm going to roll onto my left hip because I still have pain on the right hip. You can choose whichever hip feels best for you. And it's almost as though you are rolling down into a thread the needle pose. I'm going to bring my left elbow down, swivel my left hip onto the ground, bring my left hand through my arm and my hip, and then roll over onto my back. And we'll go into a modified pigeon on our backs, figure four. I hope everyone can see me okay. And find yourself all vertebra, just pressing into the mat, cross your left ankle over your right knee. This might be where you stay. You might press your knee further with your left hand, opening the left hip, you might reach through the whole of the figure four, grab onto the back of the thigh and pull that right knee in towards the heart. You might even press further with your left hand on the knee. You need to choose what works for you and then stay there, moving into that wood element of the gallbladder pathway, giving yourself time for growth and transformation, settling in, allowing stress to dissipate through the side of the body, and just breathing through this beautiful time for change, for adaptation. We're in the season of gallbladder and liver, so revel in it. And again, you can, in your mind's eye, trace the pathway. What are you feeling? Breathe through the nostrils, let your exhalations grow longer. And then on your next exhale, release the left foot down to the mat. Bring the right ankle over the left knee. Go as far into it as works for your body. Take the variation that worked for you before or try something completely different on this side. And just once you get there, Give yourself that beautiful time to transform, to grow. We have sown the seeds. It is spring. We just had the vernal equinox last week. Let things grow. Let's take a full breath in through our nostrils. Open the mouth, let the breath go. And as you continue to breathe, Bring the focus of your breath above the navel to your solar plexus. Maybe you think about the color of the sun giving you sustenance for this time for growth. 
and then gently release the right foot down. We'll continue with the litter pathway. So as you stay down with your back on the mat, you're gonna press your <clears throat> fingers to the top of your foot. Um, you can do one foot at a time or both feet, liver three, <clears throat> pardon me, it's in between the metatarsal bones of the first and second toes. And you might find this modified happy baby pose pressing into liver three, allowing for all kinds of negative emotions or energies to be released. You might massage up the entire liver pathway, up the ankles, up and behind the shin bones, and then bring the soles of the feet together, releasing your knees down to by gravity. If you have any issues with your hips, you might want to use blocks angled underneath your knees. And you can think of the whole liver pathway coming up through the adductor muscles, coming up through the body, the torso. And we're going to end pressing on the um, liver 14 point at the end of the liver pathway. It's where a bra strap is or would be intersecting with the nipple line. It is between the sixth and seventh ribs. You're going to press vertically down. Really great diaphragm release. And as you inhale, bring all that beautiful, positive, illuminated prana into the body. See it illuminating every cell within you. And as you exhale and press harder into that liver 14 over the diaphragm, release anything that no longer serves you. You can take that a couple more times. And when you're ready, release the blocks, bring the knees together. And you can gently twist your knees to the right, seeing your arms open, palms facing up, gaze over the left fingertips, pull the energy from the ring fingers. This is a triple warmer stretch. It's a supine spinal twist. And we'll take it on the other side, gently bringing the knees to the left, the gaze to the right. You can think of bringing your chin down to the armpit. We're connecting with the triple burners on the torso, the upper burner being respiration, the middle being digestion, the bottom burner being illumination. Gently bring the knees back to center. And you can roll up whatever way is most comfortable for you, coming into a seated position. Maybe that's Sukhasana. Maybe if you're working through an injury, you allow that leg to stretch out. We're just going to find a comfortable seated position as we go into heart one, pressing into heart one, summit spring. Let's start with our left arm. You can cactus that arm up, or you can bring the fingers to the midline. You can use four fingers. I like to use my thumb, taking it in, up, and back into basically the darkest, deepest part of your armpit, pressing into the front of the shoulder blade internally. Release your arm down. And then take this diagonal movement with the arm. This is really great for rotator cuff issues, frozen shoulder. You know, students with frozen shoulder might not be able to move like this, but connect them with their heart energy, the wisdom of the self, this illumination from within, this fire element. And then release. How do you feel? What do you feel? Let's balance the other side of our body now. Either cactus the arm or take the fingers to the midline, thumb or four fingers in, up and back into summit spring, heart one point. It's the closest you'll be to your heart without cutting the body open. And we'll take this diagonal, breathing in, connecting your beautiful energy to all energy everywhere. And release. We're going to continue with the heart energy. We're going to uh, come onto our stomachs. I'm going to use a blanket since my, I think I had mentioned my incision is on the front of my thigh and I'm a little tender as I go down onto my stomach. So find whichever hip works for you and then roll yourself over onto your mat or onto your blanket. You can keep your toes and your knees together. We're going to move into a modified locus, but we're moving through the energy of the heart meridian. So 
you can bring your hands into a prayer position and glide your pinkies forward, open your palms, feel that energy opening from the heart in the back through the undercarriage of the arms, through the pinkies. And then maybe you lift your palms up, keep your elbows down, lift your gaze, your chin, and you might even lift your legs behind you. This is an offering through your heart meridian to all beings everywhere. Feel it, all this beautiful energy constricting the back of your body, strengthening your spinal column, so important for us. And then gently release, glide your hands under your forehead, roll your head side to side to release any tension in the neck. And we're gonna continue with two floor bow modifications. So if you have your strap handy and you wanna use your strap around your toes, feel free to do so. Um, the grip with your hands is going to be thumbs facing up, palms towards the outside, holding the strap. We're moving through pericardium pathway on this stretch. If you wanna modify, and this one is actually, I think, harder than using the strap. I can't use the strap because of my, ten my tension and, and um, just how sore I am on the front of the body, still in the front of the thigh. But I love this where it's like you're taking a sphinx with your hands down, the elbows underneath your uh, shoulders, and then lifting up the body, lifting up the gaze, and then lift your arms up. See if you can feel the energy moving from the pec muscles down the biceps, the middle of the forearms, into the carpal tunnel, areas of the wrist, middle of the palms, into the tips of the pinkies. This is a really great stretch from the back of the spine. You're leading through the CV17 point, the front of the heart, and then slowly and gently roll down, hands under the forehead, roll your head, maybe sway your hips, release and let go. We'll continue with one more floor bow modification. Again, you can keep your toes, your strap around your toes, reaching back this time with the thumbs facing down. Or try this. I'm going to modify my blanket. If you have your, your, <clears throat> have your mat in front of you, so you have the edge or you have a blanket in front of you, you find this sphinx pose. Elbows are under the shoulders, palms are facing down, and then stretch your heart up, your gaze up. Begin to stretch your elbow straight, hold on to the edge of your mat or your blanket. And I'm going to lift my toes up, bending my knees. So I have this effect of I'm in bow. And then we're going to go deeper still with a release through lion's breath. We're going to stick our tongues out as far as possible, bug our eyes out. Letting go through the top of the lungs. This is a lung pathway stretch. Activation through the front of the body. Keep the eyes looking up. Inhale through the nostrils. And you're also releasing not only the top of the lungs, but the base of the tongue, the Vishuddhi throat chakra. Inhale, lion's breath. One more time, inhale, lion's breath. And then gently bend the elbows, release down, bring the hands like pillows underneath the forehead, rock and roll your head, releasing tension in the neck. And now we're going to move through this yoga remount, this therapeutic remount. So I'm going to bring my right hand back towards my right hip and maneuver over onto my right hip, bringing my body into a little bit of a, of a, modified fetal position and then press myself up until I can get back into that tabletop position. You might want to take a couple of little cows, sway side to side, then bring whatever hand is next to your chair, balance yourself, feel very confident that you are held and supported, bend the knee that is near the chair, <clears throat> bring that foot to the ground, and then begin to Bend the other leg, slide the foot close up and glide your hand up your leg and then come to sit in your chair. So that is the yoga remount. So as we age, 
falls, unfortunately, can and do happen. At least you know how to get back up from a fall. And if, you know, and this is great to teach your students because if they feel like they're going to fall, this is a way to basically keep yourself from falling so you don't break something. So um, it's a really important thing to, to know and to teach. We'll continue with our lung two point. Let's start with our right fingertips moving under our left collarbone, <clears throat> excuse me, finding cloud gate. I like to rotate my thumb back, opening the shoulder. And then you can go even deeper, pressing into lung two. Move that entire arm, leaning with the thumb, thumb towards the back of your room. Great for rotator cuff issues, for frozen shoulder. Students might not be able to do it, but they can at least take the baby steps towards it. Finding freedom, freedom of movement, freedom from sorrow or sadness. Let's take it on the other side. Find the fingertips under the right collarbone towards that divot between the muscles. Rotate the thumb towards the back of the room. Lead with the thumb forward and back, circling that entire arm. You might close your eyes and just sense what you're feeling. Always creating that journey to that intuitive level of communication with the self. Then release. We'll go into our next camel, also a modified camel. We'll stay here in our chairs. We're gonna bring our thumbs back towards the back of the room, opening the palms, and then bring those hands to the back of the chair, thumbs facing out, and hold on to the back of your seat, of your chair. You're gonna already feel like you're opening across lung two points, opening across the top of the lungs, and then lead with the heart, elevate your gaze up and back. See if you can feel that you are aligning lung two directly over the end of the lung pathway, the tips of the thumbs. Pull up through the muladhara, the muladhara, the, muladhar, the root chakra, up towards the heart. Breathing here, and then slowly lead with the heart. Sense that sense of freedom and liberation. We're gonna hinge from the hips, leading with the heart, gliding the hands down, finding yourself in wind relieving pose. We're compressing the large intestine here. And now let's go a little bit deeper into the subtle energy of the body, moving through the large intestine pathway. Bring your right hand or fingertips to the mat in between your toes. Stretch your left index finger up. Your gaze might follow. Bring the gaze back down and breathe from the left index finger across the top of the arm, side of the neck, front of the face, eliminating via the breath out through the right nostril. Large intestine pathway. Let's release the left hand down and take that on the other side. Stretch up through the right index finger. Bring the gaze back down. Feel the stretch through the subtle pathway from the tip of the index finger out through the left nostril. And then gently release. Begin to hinge up, gliding your hands up to the tops of your thighs. Maybe flip your hands so the palms are face up. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Close your eyes setting up for our modified Shavasana. Let your breath return to normal. Let your internal gaze find its way behind the brow. Soften from toes to top of head. Feel that connection through pericardium eight point in the middle of the palm, connecting you as the seer to the infinite, boundless, unbreakable, infinite energy that connects us all through all time, through all space. Let your energy resonate as the seer, that which is not born, that which does not die.
Slowly bring your hands back into prayer position. You might press the knuckles of your thumbs into CV 17, connecting with the heart. May all beings everywhere be free of suffering and pain, including ourselves. And may we help each other along the path, always. Um, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you all so much for allowing me to share these modifications and movements. And uh, please feel free to unmute yourselves and ask any questions or give any feedback or if we want to do that later. I'll let Rose Thank Aaron you so or... much, Kim. Thank You're you. You're amazing. Thank Does you. Does anybody Please. have questions? You can say them out loud or... Um... Hi, Kim. That was amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what would you do for someone that can't get on the ground, like that um, doesn't want to leave their chair or... Well, I think it's really important to try to teach them and, you know, maybe do it. I, I always talk about these incremental baby steps that you take in any, in anything that you do when you're challenging yourself. So maybe it's that they put their hand on the chair. Maybe, maybe then you can get them to move from that to bending the one knee down. And then once they feel, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really actually held and supported by this chair. I can go deeper. I can put the other knee down. I can bring the other hand down. So maybe it's just a matter of walking them through it a little bit at a time. Uh, people are always afraid of something new. And so if you can show them that, you know, they've got this, they can do this in, in you know, incremental steps and then put it all together. And plus, if you can tell someone that, hey, this will keep you from falling and breaking something that if you know how to do this, you're going to be able to protect yourself and get down. Like, you know, maybe somebody feels faint or the, you know, so this is a way, get down, just sit down on the ground. And, I, you know, Roseanne and I talked about this, I think at length in the beginning, uh, when we first started to teach this, I at first thought, no, we shouldn't be down on the floor. And then Roseanne was like, no. And I thought, God, she, that is so perfect because it, as we age, the one thing we do not want to do is have a fall and break a bone. And, you know, um, I, I look, I, you know, I mentioned my friend who fell just carrying groceries. I mean, I wonder if she had known how to like sort of stop herself. I don't think she slipped. I just think her leg gave, gave out from under her. So if she had known how to maybe hold on to something and just maneuver herself down, you know, I don't know. Does is that helpful? Do, do you think that could be a helpful scenario for someone who might not want to get down on the ground? I you think, could try it. I think it's a really good point. I mean, like we had talked about that definitely it can help people have have the strength in their wrists and and shoulder to um to maybe stop a fall, but even if they do fall, I mean, then they're on the floor. How do they get up? It's just it's just really important to do it one time a day, yeah. one yeah. time, not over and over and over. That's why you modify the sequence. But instead of leaving it out completely, get them to go one time. Yeah. And I will say, going back to my mom who has Parkinson's, who's almost 91 years old, I tried to teach her this because she's fallen several times. And I think she, when she, I think what she calls falls are where she actually just kind of goes down. And, and I think she then calls it a fall. But so I tried to teach her how to get back up. And, you know, um, I think it sticks in, but kind of not. I mean, she has Parkinson's dementia. Um, she, her go-to is I can't, I can't. And I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. So, um, you know, sometimes I think you have to be a cheerleader for them too, you know, but. Kim, I taught my mother-in-law that getting back up thing, remember? I, 
I remember she had a fall and she yes. was outside alone. I didn't teach it to her until after that happened, but she had said I couldn't get up and I laid there for 10 minutes before I, you know, outside by herself. And so I sent her a video of, of that exact thing that you had shared previously. So thank you again for that. Yes. And I'm, I'm happy that worked for her too. So cool. Wow. So important. Thank you. Can I just quickly say something? Please. Um, and you kind of mentioned it, and I think it's also the fear because my mom being elderly too, she's fallen a few times and and I was an EMT and I also run into people who are on the ground and can't get up and nobody wants to touch them because they're like afraid that they're going to break something. I'm like, yeah. she's hurting laying there. Let's get at least get her up, you know, help. And I think it's the fear of like uh, of falling. So if you teach them that, then they kind of lose that fear and that's so helpful for the body. So perfect, thank you. It was very helpful. Yeah. Thank you.